The Great Pavilion is a treasure trove filled with rare and exotic plants and the people who've dedicated their lives to growing them. Matt Soper is one such exhibitor whose lifelong obsession with carnivorous plants has resulted in a collection of over 20,000. We visited his nursery in Hampshire as he selected the plants for this year's show. I just like the shapes, colours. They're different. There's something just a bit unusual. And also they do a job, they catch insects, flies and wasps. There aren't any other plants that can do that, I don't think. The first thing that grabbed my attention with carnivorous plants would have been the Venus flytrap, and I'd seen them on a natural history programme. The uh, screen was filled with the trap closing on a fly, and that's what initially sparked my interest. Every year it just slowly built up. It wasn't a conscious effort to think, right, one day I'm going to do this. It just slowly happened, I suppose, yeah. This is the main greenhouse. There's in excess of 15,000 large display plants in here. The age range is from eight to about 35, 40 years. Some of them I've grown from seed. I would say the main three trapping mechanisms are the pitfall traps, and then you've got the spring traps, and also the sticky sun dews. These are North American pitcher plants, Saracenia, and they're by far the most efficient of the carnivorous plants. They're extremely good fly and wasp catchers, and the way in which they capture their prey, they produce a nectar around the lid here, which has an intoxicating effect on insects, so flies and wasps are initially attracted to this nectar, they eat the nectar and then make their way down to the throat of the plant where there are larger deposits of nectar produced. It's extremely slippery and then the flies literally slip down into the tube and there's a digestive fluid which slowly breaks the insects down and this is where the plant gets its nitrogen from. This is a quite an impressive one. I don't normally see them as big as this. <laughs> this is an old favourite. <laughs> this is a Venus flytrap. They've got three trigger heads on each lobe, and when small crawling insects or large flies walk into these traps, they touch two of the trigger hairs, one, two, and then the trap closes around the fly. These are sundews. They're very unusual. They produce this sticky globules of glue on the leaves you can see here, very sticky. They catch a very small insect, such as white fly, good in a greenhouse, fruit flies, and small house flies. A lot of people worry about them catching enough flies. I would say that's the least of my worries. I don't even give that a second thought. The fly bit, they, they do that. Uh, not me. My main interest with the plants, especially this group of plants, Saracenia, is hybridisation. They say you can't improve on nature. <laughs> Can. <laughs> I'm going to cross this primary hybrid excellence back with Saracenia minor. So I'll take the flower, lift the petal up. Can you see the pollen grains? And scoop some up. Then there's a little nodule just on the other side here. And I touch the pollen and the stigma. And this is how we make new plants. If you cross a really big green plant, with a short bright pink one. You'd like to get really big bright pink plants, but you probably end up with a lot of short green ones. So it is a lucky dip. Perfect conditions if you're at home and you want to grow really nice plants would be a small unheated greenhouse. Maybe you want to grow tomatoes in. They like a lot of light, water, cold in the winter. I'd say those three things are very important. This year will be our 19th year at Chelsea Flower Show and we've had 18 consecutive gold medals. We're putting on a single genus display of these North American picture plants. We've got the plants to back it up. This will be one of the largest displays they've seen up at Chelsea. This will be a good example. It's nice and upright. Other pictures facing forwards, that'd be a really good plant to take along. 
This is a nice colourful one, it's been open a bit longer. That would go, that one's too dull. I had no interest in gardening whatsoever as a youngster, but now I like growing other things as well, like orchids and ferns. But it all came from growing carnivorous plants, and I feel they're a really, really good way to get youngsters into gardening in general. It's really nice to see people starting to grow these plants. Matt, you seem to be on an unstoppable Saracena roll. You're well, taking the world by storm. Tell me how many golds you've got here in Chelsea. Um, we've been coming 19 years, yes. and this is our 19th gold medal. <laughs> and you were best in show at Morven. Yep, best in show at Morven, which was really, really difficult because of all the shows we attend. Mm -hmm. Morven is such a high quality show because the time of the year, as you yes. know, yes. everything's fresh as a daisy. And yeah, we've got best in show. I have to say, I have never seen a better display of Saracenas than this year. They are absolutely superb. Is that because you're getting better at it or it's a good year? Um, we were planning for this one yes. a year in advance. We don't normally do the work that we've had with this display. Um, and also, it's like the stars have aligned. Everything's perfect. With that hot spell we had, yes. it really brought them up. And then the rain stopped them up just before Chelsea. Yes. They're pristine. We haven't had the colour before. Like and this. these are all grown indoors. All in heated the, glass. Uh, no, these unheated have all been glass. unheated glass house near Winchester, Hampshire. Right. Um, they've been freezing cold in the winter. Yeah. And all this growth that we're looking at here has been yes. produced in the last seven weeks. So yeah. everything here. Because I think people have this idea that they're very specialist plants and that and they're potentially tricky. My experience of them is nothing could be easier. That's right. Yep. yep. Just a couple of rules to follow. Yeah. Plenty of sunlight keep them cold in the winter, they're not tropical, they look very exotic, yeah. but you must use rainwater if you're in a very hard water right. area, rainwater is key. And I also know that people are a little bit tentative about cutting them back, what's your advice on that? Yeah, we had a lot of people here asking us, no, when they look tatty, cut the dead bits off yeah. to allow the sun to get into the crown so the new growth can come up. So when they, the leaves turn brown, look a bit tatty, as I say, just trim them up. And finally, briefly, can you grow these without any protection at all? Um, we're halfway through a trial with the RHS on our nursery at the moment. Yes. We've been growing them outside completely unprotected. Nothing has died. Yes. They're all coming up fine. They're a bit behind these because he's been under glass, right. but they seem fine at the moment. Yes, you can. So we could, anybody could set these most exotic of any plant here in the town, yeah. could grow this on a balcony or even a windowsill. That's right. As long as they're getting plenty of light, they've got yeah. rainwater yeah. and the right compost, they're fine. Well, I think they look fantastic. I know that people are loving them. So, so keep going, Rex, please, and we'll talk about your 20th gold medal next year. That'd be great. Thanks, Monty. All right. Really nice to talk Thank to you. you.